Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of college algebra and trigonometry. All material has an assumed prerequisite of both Algebra 1, which is elementary algebra, and Algebra 2, which is intermediate algebra. While some prerequisite topics are reviewed briefly, a more thorough review of these entrance topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This video is for those who are going through trigonometry or a course in trigonometry. You should have already uh, familiarized yourself with the base graphs for the sine, the cosine, the secant, the cosecant, the tangent, and the cotangent. You should be able to graph them, uh, transformations of them, all that fun stuff. So in this video, we're going to talk about identifying the equation of a trigonometric function from a graph. We've already done that for the sine and cosine in a previous video, so you can look through my video series for that. It should be about five videos back. But in this video, we'll just talk about finding the base or finding the equation for a function that's not sine or cosine, but instead secant, cosecant, tangent, or cotangent. To be honest with you, these are not any more challenging than finding the graph of a sine or a cosine, at least when you're dealing with secant and cosecant. This is sort of true, uh, not exactly, but sort of. In this case, you know that this is either a secant or a cosecant. It's hard to tell which, to be honest with you, and it probably is one. It, you could uh, write it as either. The full period of this would go from, uh, I'm gonna grab this guy from here, all the way to here. That's a full period of the uh, graph, because you need both ups and downs and if you start graphing it right here you've got the only half the down taken care of and you need the other half of the down so uh this tells me that uh well it doesn't tell me anything other than that 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 we uh our period ends right there to find the period though you can easily just say well they gave me the halfway point from here to here is actually the halfway point so that's actually nice that they did that because then I can go ahead and uh, take the difference between those two values. So uh, just as I did with the um, with the sine and cosine identifying equations video, I'm gonna go ahead and list out all the key pieces of information. I'm gonna say this is like A times a secant or a cosecant, we have no idea actually. BX plus C plus D and the period is not B. Again, I've, I've mentioned that and I was kind of critical about it in a previous video, but this B is not the period. It is associated with the period, but it's not the period. So let's see the actual period of this function. There we go. Period is going to equal. Let's see here. If that's half the period between those two points, pi over two minus a negative three pi over two, then the whole period is twice that. Twice the distance between pi over two and a negative three pi over two. That's how you find the distance between points, right? You subtract one from the other. That's supposed to be a three, sorry about that. So the distance between those two points is pi over two minus a negative three pi over two or pi over two plus three pi over two or four pi over two. That's the distance between those two points, this point right here and this point right here. And we need to double that distance because that will be the actual period for that function. So it's four pi. But remember, when we're building our function, B is not the period. B is associated with the period. The period is two pi over B if we're talking sequence and cosecants. So that implies two pi over B is equal to four pi. Multiplying both sides by B and dividing both sides by four pi, you'll get that B is equal to one half. Again, I'm not stating which of these two functions it is yet, um, but I will assume that my function starts 
here. That's what I'm going to assume, that that is the beginning of my function. And if that's the case, then let's see what our base graph looks like. Something like this. Right. And what does that look like to you? It looks like an upside down cosine, right? The regular cosine starts high, goes low, goes back high, but this is the upside down version of it. So if that's an upside down cosine, this must be an upside down secant, the reciprocal of cosine. So I'm going to go ahead and erase all that. And I'm going to say it's an upside down secant. So now our function is y equals some negative a secant of b x plus c plus d. Now the next thing we're going to want is the amplitude, just because, well, that's kind of uh, a no-brainer here. So the amplitude's always kind of the average of the y values for the max and min on your sine or cosine that you're dealing with. So if I look at the average, y average, for the point here and here, it'll be the halfway in between point. Well, that means, um, and th by the way, that'll be the midline, honestly. So the midline is going to be the average of those y values, so three plus a negative one, and you're gonna divide that by two. So three plus a negative one is two over two is one. So I know my midline is one. And remember the midline is how far up you've lifted your curve. So that's gonna be D. So I'm gonna fill that in right now. Negative A, we'll get to the amplitude. I said amplitude a moment ago, but I actually didn't dive into it yet. But now we can. If I know that this midline is one, then the amplitude's just the distance between the midline and our max or min for the sine or cosine. So what is that distance or that distance? Doesn't matter to me. It's two, three minus one or one minus a negative one. It's gonna be two. So I know that the amplitude is two for this. So it's gonna be a negative two secant of one half X plus C and then plus one. Now we just need to know what C is. And C, remember, is not the phase shift, not phase shift. It is actually associated with the phase shift, but it's not the phase shift. So let's go ahead and figure out what is that phase shift right there? Negative three pi over two is where we started graphing. So let's go ahead and say the phase shift is equal to a negative three pi divided by two but that's supposed to be the same as negative C over B. Multiplying both sides by a negative, we get the following. Three pi over two is equal to C over B, but we know what B is, it's one half. Or that means that three pi, I was gonna say or in other words, but that's three pi over two is equal to two C. Now you can divide both sides by two and you get three pi over four is equal to C. And that's it. That's our full uh, function. Negative two secant of one half X plus three pi over four and then plus one. Now, a lot of students find this material uh, when you're doing this to be somewhat challenging, if not really challenging. Uh, all I can say here is that uh, you should really write out the base function just like that and then just start tackling like uh, pieces of this whatever looks to be the easiest to me starting with the periods always the easiest so I just look at the picture and say well how long does it take to get from beginning to end of this graph if they don't hand me the full length they have to hand me at least part of the length and in this case they only gave me half of the length and so I just know that half the length of the period is pi over two minus a negative three pi over two, or in other words, uh, four pi over two. And then I'm gonna double that up to get to the full period. So that's four pi. And then I know the relationship for the period of a secant graph or a cosecant is two pi over B is gonna be equal to that four pi. And then I can at least get what B is. Once I have that, then I usually dive into where's the midline. 
take the average of the y values for the max and mins on the uh, co cosine or the sine. And then that gives me the amplitude. And now I only have the phase shift left. So that's, that's a really good attack for these. It takes a lot of practice to go through and do these correctly. Now, I often have found that finding the equation of a graph tangent is probably the hardest one. And I don't know why I have that trouble with it, but it just is that way. This is a tangent curve. It starts low, goes high. Um, however, it is a little bit um, of a challenge. Let's go ahead and at least identify where the curve begins. And remember, our tangent curve, our base tangent graph should look like this. And there should be an asymptote and then like that. So wherever it looks like it's crossing, this has not been lifted, by the way, that would be a terrible, terrible problem to have a lifted tangent graph. But it looks as though our graph crosses the x-axis right about there, halfway between pi over two and pi. Halfway between pi over two and pi is three pi over four. So I'm assuming, I know it's, could be a terrible assumption, but I'm assuming that we're starting our tangent graph here at three pi over four. So let's see. Now I need to know where it would end. And unfortunately, it doesn't showcase where it ends because it got cut off, but that's okay, actually, because I could tell you the halfway point where it ends, well, that halfway to the end, I should say. Here is two pi right here, whoops, right there. And here's five pi over two. Well, if I put things into uh, perspective, I guess, what's halfway between two pi and five pi over two? I would probably get everything in denominators of four. So two pi is eight pi over four. And five pi over two is 10 pi over four. So this vertical asymptote must occur at nine pi over four. So I know the half period is nine pi over four minus three pi over four or six pi over four. So that's the half period. Let me write that above the half period is equal to six pi over four. Obviously that's three pi over two. Normally I would not reduce that, but it's going to be beneficial, I think. And then you're going to double that to get the full period. So that's what I'm going to do here. All right. Now, that all being said, I should probably write down the form of the equation. It should be a tangent of BX plus C plus D. I don't see a vertical lift or drop, and that would be very rare on a tangent problem anyway. So I, I have a feeling that D is zero. It hasn't been lifted up or down. We also know that B is related to the period. I should probably just write the period. We also know that the period here is twice that half period. So the period must be three pi. Well, remember for the tangent, the period will be pi over B. So this is the relationship that will find it will allow us to find out what B is. We're going to multiply both sides by B, divide both sides by three pi, and you'll get that one third is equal to B. So right now, <clears throat> excuse me, my function looks like Y equals a tangent of one third X plus C. And then we don't have a plus D because it's not lifted or moved down. Now our phase shift, our phase shift where we start graphing is actually at three pi over four. And remember that should be negative C over B. However, B is one third. So that's three pi over four is equal to a negative C over one third. Or in other words, three pi over four is equal to a negative three C. Dividing both sides by a negative three, you find that C whoops, is equal to a negative pi over four. So let me go ahead and insert that into my function here. 
So I get y is equal to a tangent of one third x minus pi over four. And the last little bit, the a, there's no way of finding that here. I'm gonna assume it's one because they didn't give me any y values. And I say the, they, I say they didn't, but the reality is that I created this and I didn't give us any value for y's. So I'm gonna assume that the amplitude is one. Um, because that's usually going to be the case with the tangent curve. If they do give me a value, let's say they give me a point here and it's, it, if they give me a point, it means something. Um, then I would go ahead and uh, just sub that in, but that's not likely to happen here, honestly. Um, it's, it's really, really rare. But if they did, let's say they gave me the point, um, uh, let's see, that's pi, so... 3 pi over 2. Let's say they gave me 5 pi over 4, comma, um, 2. Let's just pretend, okay? Then what would I do? I'd go to this function and I'd plug in 5 pi over 4, minus pi over 4. And I'd get the output of 2, and then I'd have to do a little bit of manipulation here to find out what this is. Of course, in this case, I wouldn't be able to do it, but actually 5 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12 is a negative 2 pi. Yeah, I could do it in this case. Uh, yeah, all right, let's just pretend. If you do the mathematics there, 5 pi over 12 minus pi over 4, it's 5 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12 or 2 pi over 12. But 2 pi over 12 is pi over 6. And quickly graphing out our pi over 6 pi over 2, I'm sorry, pi over 6, pi over 3, right angle triangle. The tangent of pi over 6 is 1 over root 3. And so you would find A by multiplying both sides by root 3. That's if they gave me a point, but they didn't. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that. However, uh, that's if they had given me a point. Uh, luckily, they did not. So I'm going to assume the y value is 1. All right. That's pretty much it for finding the graphs of uh, the secant, cosecant, tangent, cotangent. Notice I didn't bother with a cosecant or a cotangent. It's not that they're not important. It's just they're done the same way that these the tangent and the secant are done. So there's not any big deal. The major issue that people will have is well there are a lot of tripping points here but one of the major ones is just remembering that the tangent and cotangent are oddballs that they have uh this period that's pi so when you compute uh the when you're given a, a picture and you can see the period that is equal to not that's equal to pi over b not 2 pi over b so that's kind of important uh anything else i need to state i don't think so we're good it's the system of equations We must deal with them all at once Always looking for solutions Positive outlook overcomes Obstacles getting in our way comes Effects more than we can sometimes see Things for what they are And work together until you feel at peace yes. Listen close Don't talk too much That isn't cold Sure, you may really hurt inside it doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry. Don't.